Yes, welcome to the Shelter Footy Cast. It's the Southern River Band playing out of Thornley. Cal and the boys, Will Schofield, Mark Reddings here for another preview. Getting towards the end of the round. Uh, well, we are at the end of the round. We're start of the round. End of the year, Skeeter. This is round 22. Yeah, it's been probably the longest year in the history. <laughs> Your life? Of my life. It's gone forever. <laughs> well, even though I've been away for 10 days, but it feels like with WA football being so horrendous, yeah, it just feels like it's dragged on a bit. But uh, we've got a derby this weekend. We've got... Uh, some breaking stories with retirements oh, and, and there's big, actually plenty happening and right big, yeah a bit happening uh, including a big name state at the Eagles which um, you alluded to earlier this week that was possibly on the card so yeah it's a, it's a there's no shortage of headlines to, to yak about. Yeah, that is correct. Um, I reckon there's a few more to come as well, Skater. A little teaser for you there. Socials at Shelter Footycast. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. If you want to send us an email, we'll get to them at the back end of the show. Uh, the bottom up roughly of the week this week, Skater. I reckon we've been in good form. I actually think we've been in we've good form. We've got one weekend right between <laughs> us all year. And you reckon we're in good form. Okay, that's good. I like that your, your confidence. Are West Coast in good form at the moment? Well, they're not in horrendous they're, form. They've, they're, well, okay, so maybe that's how we describe ourselves. We're not in horrendous <laughs> form. The bottom mark, roughly of the week. Start your footy weekend at bottom mark. Grab your shelters where bottom mark has you covered. Froth Town, it's a week away. 17th, uh, 18th, 19th of August. See you there, Skeeter. Dice playing at Shelter, September yep. 22. Get your tickets now, oztick.com.au. Uh, Let's get into it. As we said, there's plenty happening at the moment. Maybe we go from furthest away just so we can cover it off. The Eagles tanking, um, no plus one behind the ball. Well, we talked stuff. about, I think we spoke briefly about. I can never remember what we no, talked about. No, I can't. I've got to be honest. I've got no idea what we spoke about. <laughs> Monday, what, what I do need to discuss and ask you, I don't think I definitely didn't ask you this, is the vision of Adam Simpson with, I think, what was it, 80 seconds to go, 90 seconds yeah. to go, coming, he was on, on the boundary, and essentially, you could read his lips saying, no. Plus one. And sh- yeah, he's doing signals as well, right? Yeah, yeah, so no plus one. Now, with that amount of time remaining, we know since then Nathan Buckley and others on the East Coast have come out and said, why would you go with that type of plan when you're defending a lead? Yeah. I don't know what the thinking is. Can yep. you help me out? Yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, there's a few ways to look at this. Um, what One, one which overrides everything, footy, as much as you plan and you want to do things and you want plus ones and you and you want extras around the ball and you want to win clearances, all those are wants. Like to actually make them happen, you need to execute plans. And so whether or not West Coast executed what they were trying to do, that's still a bit unseen. But I'll tell you what they did do. They had they didn't have a plus one. You're right. They had a plus two. So they sent both of their wingers behind the ball. So there was there was if Essendon doesn't equalise, there was plus two. Both the wingers rolled back at the centre bounce. So they started on the back of the square, came behind the ball. Essendon, well coached. Their players followed them. Their wingers went forward as well. So started as 6v6 at the centre bounce. There's a secondary stoppage. It's now 8v8 behind the ball. That's where it opened up. Right. So as a team, you have a, you have a decision to make. You can either put another one back and go nine. If Essendon follow that, you can put another one back and you can keep doing that. You can play this game or there becomes a point where you're like, okay, there's enough people behind the ball. Hopefully eight can defenders can get it done. Mm. You need to stop it from getting down there. Yeah, so you win the footy at the source, yeah. So what happened was, and whether or not the no plus one, I think the no plus one meant Simo could see the plus two. We don't want another plus one. Keep it up the stoppage. So they had a loose at the stoppage, trying to stop it at the source. If West Coast win that stoppage, there is not one conversation had. We, we literally, there would not be one person talking about what West Coast did because they would have won the stoppage, they would have got it in their forward line, they would have won the game. So just to clarify, because on the TV, obviously I, I couldn't see it, I was doing some waffle anyway, but so you saw that on the TV or you're, you've spoken to people after, Both. after the match to, to try Both. and get clarity? Both, I can see that. You can, you can see West Coast structure, it wouldn't have changed too much since I've been there. When, it, when it's late in the game, they put their wingers on the back of the square and they roll around. Now, if Essendon don't come with them and they, they keep their wingers up, it's the half-forwards role to come and mad those wingers up and you're trying to get Essendon to have players loose behind the ball. So West Coast would be rolling up, but Essendon well coached. They roll up, so their wingers go, their half-forwards come. So break it there. Adam you, Simpson, you can't have 15 players behind the ball. Adam Simpson did everything that you, you would have done as coach, for instance. I, I, think, I think you can do either. And... I think if they had their time again, they would have put a like they would have put another one and tested Essendon. Yep. But the 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 
the lever that you're pulling, the test is if Essendon keep equalizing, you then, it's just hugely open off the back. You got half back screaming off, getting handball receives, and you're extremely exposed, and it's going to get down there anyway. So mm. if you have a loose or not, sometimes it doesn't matter. So with a young team that would have never practiced this situation again, like before, that's what they did. And, and footy, this is what happens. Like, you, well, let's take you, another you, example. Sometimes you get a plus one, sometimes you don't. And I didn't see any of, uh, of this because I, was, I think I was calling a game at the time, but Hawthorne against Richmond, uh, that Sam Mitchell spoken about, you talk about a young team. He said at the time when, they, when the Tigers you know, came home and yep. beat them by a kick, he said, as a young team, we, we haven't actually gone through the process of, of mastering that, that last minute and a half, two minutes of, of defending a lead. That, that'll come in time. Whether the Eagles were in the same boat, uh, I can't give an answer to but they're not the only team that has, has been through that this season well we've heard Adam Simpson like regularly I speak to him every Monday and he regularly says we haven't done any match sim this week because we haven't had enough players if they're not doing match sim during the week you can't just put magnets up on the board and say hey boys when this happens this is what we're going to do mm. you need to do it so it starts at training and you can put you know scenarios in place and you can you know practice but still even then as a young player you need to see it in a game and quite frankly you need to lose. You need to be beaten like that to then go in a game, shit. Like, this is how we should have done This it. is what we should have done mm. or I need to be speaking to this guy. But until you've seen it, like you don't know. Mm. You actually don't know what you don't know, which you might and be And by the way, the, the umpire with that second stoppage, he has, <laughs> has a, a, the greatest mare of a throw-up I've ever seen in my life. He threw it forward, not up. It was a t- horrendous, and a, a, to the disadvantage of the Eagles. Anyway, you know what? As my, my mum is just an Eagle supporter, she goes, you know what? I was happy we lost, and I was happy we were competitive. To and, finish it off, yeah. that, that's the best result at West Coast could have had, yeah. uh, which I think we would, probably would have said. Yes. Monday. Retirements. There's a fair bit going on, Skeeter. Luke Shuey, Trent Koch, and Isaac Smith all done this week. So you're thinking, what have we got? Eight premierships between them. Isaac Smith, four, three at Hawthorne, one at Geelong. Wow. Trent Cochin, three times premiership captain yep. at the Tigers. And Luke Shuey, of course, Norm Smith medal, as uh, Isaac Smith had as well, but in 2018. I was going to say, it's so two Norm Smiths. Trent didn't win a Norm Smith, did he? No. Not to my knowledge. But Luke and Isaac, Norm Smith. I mean, that's that's a caliber Fair trifecta. It's a fair <laughs> trifecta in one week, isn't it? <laughs> You'd be happy with that if you put some money on that. That yeah that's no a that's, that, it's a weird one, but you know what? You, all three of those players, and you know Luke um, very well, but even Isaac Smith, what he has done in his career, I think the oldest ever Norm Smith medalist last year, yeah. and Trent Cochin, who started his career and his captaincy as, as not the much loved figure we see now at, at Tigerland. He he was he went through some some tough times as skipper and as a player, but uh, all three can walk out of the game and you talk about. Talk about the, the parade and the, the lap of honour on grand final day. It's going to be pretty specky, particularly if Buddy shows up. Well, Buddy will be there. Shannon Hearn will be there. There's been some retirements. Ben Cunnington has yes. just announced his retirement. Testicular cancer. What a career he's had. Yeah, I've got some stats to read through of his a bit later on. But, um, yeah, look, there's been some big ones this year. And they're all great players in their own right. I've played against all of them. Trent Koch, and We know what he did with the culture, like he, like you said. That's where, that's where he probably changed his career. He was a in and under hard midfielder and, and he was never you know, a bad player or anything like that. But I don't think he had the respect from the league until Richmond really turned that around. And from everyone inside, it was, it was he and a couple of others that changed that culture. So he's got a legacy that will live on forever, given what he's done from a premiership standing point. Isaac Smith, I reckon people thought his career was done when he was finishing up at Hawthorne. Like he, he, it wasn't like he was... And from, to go from Hawthorne to the enemy in Geelong... The team that has given... Yeah. That, you know, we go back to 2008 and but Kenneth's it the, curse. It was the perfect addition to the Geelong team. And you, you don't have to look anything further than the grand final. And, he, and he's the best on ground. I know they smashed Sydney, but his experience in that grand final, like not that he wins in the game, but he's the best on the ground. So that he's paid for himself right there. Tom Barras stays an eagle. Mm. I heard you break this on Monday. Well, it's, I, I mentioned that... Uh, I had a, a source suggest to me that he w- wants to stay at, at West Coast. Well, it's, it's piss funny listening to everyone oh, no. scramble around breaking news. It's funny. It makes me laugh. Uh, yeah, Tom Brass, he's going to stay in Eagles. been confirmed by his manager. Trevor Nisbet's come out and said, I, I found Trevor Nisbet's coming out. It's funny. Nisbet was like, oh, yeah, Tom is going to be staying with us. Um, he's got four years left on the long-term deal. He signed 18 months ago and... Not a whole lot's changed, to be honest. Yeah, having said that, you can't say that with a smile on your face when you hear the contracts mean absolutely very little in in footy nowadays, Correct. and they can they can be very fluid. Uh, look, I think the only thing that was happening, and look, Sydney, by all accounts, oh, you know, Sydney, yeah, were very much into Tom, and Tom was, I think, at least 
entertaining. Is well, that I think fair to say? Have to with the, with the money that was getting absolutely, and we know what the situation is with Sydney with Tom McCartan and and maybe some salary cap freed up with Buddy, etc. So I expected him to to look at that really closely. And in terms of tradable value at the Eagles at the moment, I think you look at Mosca Allen and Tom was yep. probably in that top echelon yep. on a, on the podium as as to players that have got plenty of value still in them. So if he's made that call, I assume part of it is to do with, with family. Part of it's to do with he wants to see this rebuild through. Well, you know, so rumours were going around. I, you know, I heard multiple sources say this deal was done, it was signed, it was sealed, it was delivered. Now, he certainly was considering it. But I think what Tom's done now, given that it's out that, he's, that he is staying, um, and yes, I may have had an inkling that was happening, Mark, but now that it is done and, and it's, it's confirmed, I believe – He's going to create this mega legacy at West Coast. He'll be the he, he's the next, next captain of West Coast. He's the lay down, put all the chips down. Oscar Allen, I know, I know he's the youth, but I don't think they'll go with Oscar. I think Tom Barras take it to the bank. He's the next captain of West Coast. Yeah, so he'll be a captain. He's twenty seven years old. Be a captain for the next five years. Do you think that the? Do you think his decision to stay not because of the captaincy? Situation. No, it's your legacy. It's legacy. But, but do you think that Luke leaving? Not that hey, I'm sure he would have known that. But do you think he he's read the tea leaves and thinking I stay here? Not only I've got my family support system, um, club that I, I love, but also I'm the next in line here to, to captain. Well, no, I don't. Though. But if you put, you know, let's not talk for for Tom. Yeah. But if you um, you know have a mega deal at Sydney and you go for five years and you get paid heaps of money, you finish your career. You've played at West Coast for a bit. You've won a premiership. You go to Sydney. You make some good money. And, and then, maybe play... And well, then footy finishes, And right? he might be playing a premiership there as well, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, it's fair. But then footy finishes. And, and at the end of it all, when it's said and done, you look back and you make your money and you do whatever. The, the different legacies that you have there, they're very different paths, right? What he's going to do now is play for West Coast for his life. He's a West Australian guy. He's got family here. He's very connected to the community and he's in business. So he's got the choice here to make, to go to Sydney and make some money or I think stay at West Coast. He's going to be, he's going to go on the, he'd be on the wall. He'd be playing his games. He's a captain. He's, he'll be a guy in Western Australia now, which he wouldn't have been if he went to Sydney. Isn't it funny because you, you talk about legacy and, and one club player, which is still an ethos in the, the AFL. It is the only sporting code that I know of that has that same ethos. You mm-hmm. think of rugby, rugby league, you think of the football, soccer. I would what, challenge how are you speaking? You. There, there's, would, there's NFL, it's none of that. I would challenge you to say, um, I, and this is completely unqualified opinion, Skate. But I reckon AFL guys would come out more successful than some of these NRL guys. I think the NRL um, team hop because they've got 12 years, 13 years to make as much money as humanly possible. And then when it's done, it's done. I, I, I think the percentage of AFL players coming out and doing things after footy would be higher than the NRL. I think there's a large bunch of those guys and it's no, nothing disrespectful that need to make as much money in the game as possible because once it's done, not much else going on. No, well, I'm not. That's a, that's a slightly different argument to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm talking about the the the, the transient nature of, of say other codes. Yeah. And still in AFL, if you leave a club, there's that feeling you've betrayed us. Whereas in, in NRL, I don't think that's what I'm saying about Tom though. I don't. I don't think he'd feel like he's betraying West. No, Coast no, no, no. no. I'm saying I'm talking about the different codes yeah. about different players moving from um, club to club in the NRL. Uh, they know. They tell the club. 12 months out that they're leaving it just it's a different mindset and you're, you're talking about legacy at, at AFL clubs which Tom will create once he stays in his captain it should it be the case but it's just a different mindset in, in other sports and maybe they've got it right maybe we've got it wrong I think uh, it's a good result for West Coast um, they'll have a they'll have a really solid leadership group next year it'll be himself Liam Duggan Oscar Allen that'll be the three and they'll look to move on from what's been a horrific year at the footy club Matilda's into the quarterfinal skater. Yeah, huge. Did you watch? It? Did you watch the? I did watch final? some of it, and I thought they were terrific. And the crowd, the, the the TV numbers, the yeah. crowd numbers. If you go to the Derby on the weekend, there's going to be a amphitheatre set up outside Optus. So, so uh, it's at three p.m. the quarterfinal. Yep. three p.m. isn't it on yep. Saturday? Our time. Yep. And so you can watch it there and then walk straight into the footy. Absolutely. So oh, that's yeah, it's huge. And look, no one, I don't think anyone expected this to be 
um, as big as it is. So a guy called David Davudovic, who does uh, some great work yeah. um, in the football space, he told a mate of mine, uh, I was recounting this yesterday with him, he said, look, I think this will be as big as the Olympics for Australia. And my mate said, turn it up. No, you know, this is three months ago. Yeah. It's been it's been a lot more gripping and, and it's taken hold of Australia unlike, I think, any certainly any women's event we've seen. And the numbers, it's beat last year's grand final, TV numbers. Yeah, good. It's doing numbers that, I don't know, and also I think little things go a lot. The, the way that the players, um, for instance, the Matildas, after they beat Denmark, the empathy they showed towards their opponent, I don't know, there's just something that has uh, just touched a nerve with the Australian public. They love the fact that these young women are, are doing things on the big stage. And one of the young players today said, look, I was excited playing in front of 100 people not so long ago. Now we've got 75,000 people and millions watching on TV. Oh, it's, it's great. Good on them. I think it's pretty simple why it's happened. It's Australia. Australians love sport. Love doesn't winners. Matter, doesn't matter what you are, who, who if we, you are, If we were ranked from, 32 in the world, mate, we probably wouldn't have the same numbers. It doesn't matter what sport it is. If you say, like, Australians love Australians playing sport. And the quality is high level. Like, you don't have to watch more than five minutes to see some amazing soccer. So That, in, that through uh, ball that Mary Fowler yeah, hit mate. to Caitlin Ford yeah, was absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, and then the finish. It's like, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's a slight difference, I think, with all due respect to AFLW at the moment. I think it's a tougher game to play in terms of skills and being able to execute on such a large ground. Whereas, yeah, but, yeah, but no one's no one's going down and watching the national, like the, the Perth Glory, unfortunately. No, no. This is about Australia. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's, you can't compare the AFLW. No, I'm talking about the skill level. Yeah. I, just, I just think that, yeah, we're, we're AFLW just, just still finding our feet, but you know, no, nothing but respect for what they're doing um, awesome. on the world stage. Couldn't be happier. Uh, Will Schofield, Mark Redding, Shelter Footycast. All right, Skeet, we usually do the West Australian sides games right here, and it's the Derby. <sighs> wow, Derby 57. Derby preview. Do you think it's going to be a good Derby? We, I don't think we've had a good Derby for a little while now. No. I, so I'm trying to work out, after what we just said about the Eagles and um, losing and and not and being happy to lose but happy to be competitive, do, does that go out the window this weekend where you, you – Win at all costs. Luke, I mean, Luke Ryan said it's like a grand final for both t- t- both teams on six PR. Said it's 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 massive for us. It's like a grand final for us, and it'll be like West Coast grand final as well. Well, that's sad if that's the case in, because both the fifteenth and eighteenth. Well, I'm just saying it's sad that we're at that. You point. can't just have them. They can't just pack up shop and not play. No, I can understand that. Well, well, it to is say sad it's a grand final. Well, well, it is sad that both teams have been absolutely sure. shit house this year. I agree. So to say it's like a grand final, I mean, yeah, okay. Well, Jesus, it's been like how disappointing. Seriously, no, no, I agree. But you, in saying that. I think when when the siren goes, what? No, no, go on. I've just been reminded. Go someone, on. someone actually on Messenger said to me, a bloke <laughs> from the Footy Commission. <laughs> on Messenger, you reckon? No, no, it is. It was some. It was what do you call it? Anyway, I've got it here. It's on WhatsApp. I'll, I'll pad for you if you like. No, it's WhatsApp. No, I'll tell you. You, I, don't, I can't remember you saying this, but apparently earlier this year on this podcast, oh, God. You, you said this will be good. Um, you said in in all seriousness. And this is going back to the West Coast Eagles and your bold predictions. You said if the Eagles, just listening to your old podcast, apparently your mate Scoey is doing a nude lap of Optus Stadium if the Eagles get the wooden spoon. That is what has been sent to me by Addy Wetzler, who said, wow. that's what you said earlier this. Now, I don't know if we've got that, but if you have said that, Fuck we're going to find it and we're going to make sure that you execute your promise. I will <laughs> not be looking for that audio if someone <laughs> finds the and audio. You know, and you know I won't be able to find it. If someone finds the audio, I'll consider being a man of my word. I'll also consider not being a man of my word as well. Uh, Jaden, just put your buttons down, okay? Just don't press any buttons. What do you, do? What do you want to press at me? Go on. What are you going to give me? Go on. Go on. Go on, big dog. Press one. Press one. Press one. Okay. Um, well, the other the thing, derby. People, people are saying stupid things like there's an announcer on Triple M saying she'll change her name by Depol to Matildas if they win the win the final. <laughs> we have lost the plot. Anyway, yeah, that's good, good stuff. Uh, Bailey, Bailey, uh, Bailey Williams free to play. I think that's a good result. Yeah, looking at the replay, he, he, he's stiff to get sighted in the first place. It was like an hour and a half deliberation from how, the time we how? I made the I made the point. So he's got I don't know point zero two of a second to make a decision. Why did the tribunal get that, 90, 90 minutes to have him sit yes. around make make a call on whether it's fair or not? That's I mean, a good that, shout. Yeah. That, that 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 shows how hard this game is. So I think it's great he's playing because it's going to be a good matchup in the middle. Luke Absolutely. Jackson v Bailey Williams, two jumping ruckmen. They both love jumping. I think both of them have had trouble against those rucks that want to stop and prop and get their big bodies in the way. Look, these guys are both big guys, but they're both athletic. They, well. they yeah. both probably play similar footy. So I think that's going to be a, you know, a real 
pressure point in the middle of this game. Uh, Shannon Hearn, Luke Shuey, they won't be playing. They're ruled out. Uh, hopefully, they get back and play that last game of the year. So, from what I hear, Hearn with a bit of his Achilles yep. soreness and not actually Luke just – is it just protecting I think the he's fact- lo- I think he's looking to play next week. I th- yeah, that's what I'm – Oh, really? Yeah, I, th- I think An so. An away game. Okay, so – I think so. I don't know. Maybe he's not. Maybe uh, I'll- I'd, I'd, look, if you, I would prefer – If you're done, you're done. I prefer him just playing the one game against Adelaide yeah, and have a double do send-off. Do a hammy in there. Yeah, yeah. That's, and his record ain't flash. So no, I reckon that would be a good result for the club. <sighs> what about Fremantle? So we know they've been disappointing. Hayden Young's moved into the midfield. We spoke about this on Monday. Yep. I think it's been really positive. Does he stay in there? Is there someone for him to run with? I, I think there probably is. Well, even if there isn't, I, I mean... Does, does he have to run with a player to be effective as a Well, so, But what he did against Dunkley last week, um, yep. and, and you call that game... He wasn't tagging him like a no. He was running, running off like the glove, but but he that was his matchup, and he, and he destroyed him. To yeah. be honest, he had thirty touches when he was there. He, he shut him down, but then he went free wheeling. So I think Tim Kelly would be the perfect matchup for him in, in that regard. Tim Kelly gets to the footy. He's a big stoppage player. Uh, I think Hayden Young could easily go to him and stay in the midfield. And this is just a, a, the first stage of his, um, I guess, development as a midfielder by doing what he's doing. I've got no doubt that. In future, given his creativity, he becomes the player that some other and position player goes to. I just think he's. I think it's a great, great experiment by Justin Lomuer. Um, and, and what's to lose? I, I think absolutely keep him in there. Um, Jackson and Williams, very good matchup. Um, what other matchups do you like? Well, given that, given that the the Jackson rucking experiment is going to continue. Yep. Um, I guess the question mark for, for West Coast is down back again. Yep. Uh, how do they, because they've got some tools down there. When you think of, um, I mean, I guess Tracy yep. is difficult to... Jai Amos. Jai Amos. Um, you know, who, who well, gets... Well, you're, 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 you're McGovern. McGovern McGovern, right. McGovern's your obvious choice. Yo still stays down back and, and yeah, takes it. he has it. to. I, I'm, I'm moving more into the camp of Elliot. Yo stays as a backman for next year. Like, he, he plays good footy there. We know he does. He started as a And backman. pinch hitting as a, as a mid, if required? Oh, it's not? very difficult to do that. I think I think that's a, that's, that's, that's a bit of a dream sometimes, um, having someone pinch hit in the middle from the back line. It's, it's difficult. Bloody hard, but in the back line, skate. Very hard. Well, apparently so. So hard that uh, I've read Peter Sumich has got Alex Pierce uh, standing down as captain at the end of this year. Explosive stuff from Explosive. Is there any... So uh, what is this... Why is this heat on... Not just from from Summer. Why is the heat on Alex Pierce as a captain? Apart from the fact that teams had a pretty average year on field... How does anyone know what his leadership qualities are no, like? No, no, not at all. Not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, look, I don't, I don't know. I, um, they don't, they don't go hand in hand. But you know, form is one thing. Yeah. Leadership is another. So, um, look, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't either. To I, be honest, I'd be surprised if he, after one season, yeah, he steps down or, or is relieved of his captaincy. I think that'd be a massive slap in the in the face. Um, just to, <laughs> it's not a bigger slap than Tom Jonas is still copping right now. No, probably, that's not true. Getting a game. Hey, by the way, Fremantle's been outscored by a total of 173 points in the first quarter. Uh, this year, well, that's not so surprising. So, so uh, given that the Eagles have had some horrendous first quarters, yes, or even second quarters, or they're, they're, their first haven't been that they've bad. Had some bad ones, yeah. But, but you're right. Against Carlton, they got kicked nine against them. But it's Fremantle. So this is their little window, West Coast, to try and you know, is there that emotional tug to to get them up and about on Saturday night? Fremantle can't transition the ball, so. Fremantle are ranked seventeenth from defensive uh, fifty transition to inside fifty. Seventeenth in the competition, so they cannot transition the footy. Um, they did it well last week in patches well, against Brisbane. Uh, well, that summarises their season. Yeah, they've true. done things in patches all year. But when, when they moved the ball quickly, been able to. I mean, you know, obviously getting Michael Fredericks out the back and or Sukowski or whoever it is, they they actually look. That's when they look their best. But they haven't been able to keep that going. Regular enough, regularly enough on against better opposition. Jack Darling has been goalless only twice in 23 derbies, so I expect Jack to have a big day. I expect Fremantle to have trouble moving the ball under West Coast improved pressure game. I think this is going to be a close this, one. This is, are, you, are you heading in a? In a uh, I think this is going to be a close you're heading one. Heading to win number three, are you? I think this is going to be a close I one. I think it's going to be close. I don't disagree. I don't because you know I just yeah I don't disagree with you. And I'm telling you right now, Skate. I'm picking Fremantle. It's a oh, I thought you were going to say the bottom mark, Ruffy of the week. Not not to be. I was having a look at it. Yeah, I, I, I think I think they'll go close, but not close enough. Well, and that's exa- now again, that that's exactly what I think Eagle supporters, most of them, would be would hoping. Want. Yeah, That'd which is which is a, which is a blight on the system 
that you're not all that keen for your team to win, given the implications of the draft and with the lotteries obviously still in the background. But yeah, I'm think Fremantle for me as well. But I, I agree with you. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if this is by less than two kicks. Fremantle's won three first quarters this year. How many has West Coast won? And you've got the answer there. Yeah. Oh, uh, clearly. <laughs> Uh, I would more, suggest more, more or less. Uh, I'd say four, five, five. Yeah, they're not. I mean, it hasn't been. They've had a <laughs> that's horrific for both of them. Yeah, horrific. <laughs> no, gosh, they could be nil all at half. Three on the derby. Three on the derby. Yeah, How much? Oh, I think ten points. Glendening Elemental. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Caleb Sarong's been yeah, close to their best star. this season. I reckon. He, you know what? We're not getting any Australian West Australians in the WA base players in the uh, All Australian team, but he he's the only one that I reckon. Glenn Jakovic could push potentially, but no, nah, I don't think we can struggle. Frio to win by 17 points. Luke Jackson for the Glenn Denning Allen medal for a bit of a roughy. Happy with that? Yeah, no, I wouldn't think he'd be that rough, but yeah, I think he's one of the. He'd be one of the top four or five on the ground that if Fremantle win would probably be a chance. Will Schofield, Mark Reddy, have you have you checked that? No, I haven't. Will Schofield, Mark Reddy, shoulder footy cast. <laughs> Oh. All right, we're we'll getting into a few games here, and this one's a bloody beauty. Yeah. Friday night footy, Collingwood v Geelong, 5.50 at the MCG. I'll be watching this game. We'll have done some work tomorrow, and I might go home and just... Uh, couple shelters. I might have a couple of shelters. No, I've got a big Saturday, but I will have a look at this one. Intriguing, isn't it, given what Collingwood has done in the past couple of weeks? Two and uh, the pos- prospect of losing three in a row against a Geelong side. Now, I don't know, you might have better intel than me. I mean, Tom Hawkins, is he... Available after that hamstring? Surely not. Well, no, I wouldn't have thought so. But this afternoon, that team will come out. Uh, still, Cybottom, yep. out. Uh, we know Dick Dacos, out. Nathan Murphy. Now, he's trained really well the last couple of uh, week, or couple of days, we believe. After a syndesmosis injury. And there is speculation that he might play, which, I, again, why would you, when you, was it two games clear on top of the table, why would you risk him yeah. uh, a month out from the finals? I think he won't play. But irrespective, gee, there's a there's a bit hanging on this, particularly for Geelong. Jack Henry studies uh, like a Liz Frank injury, which I, I don't know exactly what that means, but I know it's bad. Harrison Petty's done the same thing. Uh, has he? Yeah, he's he's gone. Ski. Nah, that's no good for those boys. So sad to hear that. Collingwood vulnerable after a couple of losses here, Skeeter. A um, couple of stats to give you. Geelong have averaged over 100 points at the MCG this year. The only other side? Ooh. Uh, Collingwood? The Melbourne Demons. Oh, so okay. Collingwood haven't even averaged 100. Geelong really? have, but I don't know how many games Geelong have played there. Collingwood um, over the last few weeks. So I found this one interesting because I've seen Craig McRae speak this week. One, big tick because he ruled Steel side bottom out on Wednesday. Just said, someone asked him about him, said, nah, Steel's not playing. I reckon there'd be a few clubs around the land that'd be rolling him into a Friday night <laughs> laid you. out. Pisses me off, but not Craig McRae. Nah. He's also publicly called out the team. So... Came out Monday Monday saying, you know, we're not doing some things that we usually do. And then I heard him yesterday say, I went down to the VFL two hours after we played at the AFL and I saw the same thing. So he said there's some issues that we're working on. And when you see it at both levels, that's a real problem because it's group wide, right? So I think they're talking about their pressure, their uh, selfishness and or unselfishness that we, we, we have seen from Collingwood. I think they're doing some things that are going away from what they've you know, built their game on. Collingwood has conceded over the last two weeks, four goals without a reply, four times over the last two weeks. So they've let a run on, a momentum swing of four goals, four times. For the rest of the year, the other 19 rounds, it's only happened 10 times in 19 rounds. So they are letting teams get a run out, run on. They can't stop them and it's causing them to lose games. Yeah, Geelong's the sort of team that can do that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but having said all that, if you look at every side this year, in the top eight particularly, they've had weeks where they have looked poor. Melbourne, yes. Brisbane. Away. I mean, there's been, they have well, been... Brisbane are poor. Well, they're poor, but they're, they're so poor, they're, they're no. second, aren't they? Or no. third? I don't know. Third by percentage. By, third. By, by not much. So they might be poor, but anyway, the bottom line is I'm saying... Beat I, I think, front, they're being free Col- front I, I think Collingwood... I don't think Collingwood's got too much to worry about by those two losses. Obviously, they would love to, to win tomorrow night. Um, I, I think well, you're just not going to get perfect seasons in the AFL, Scully. And you know, that, what you, those, those numbers you point out are worth looking at and examining and trying to fix. But I just don't think you're going to get a 23-round season where you, you know, don't put a foot wrong. So, so they, Do they try and replace Nick Dacos or do they just go about it? Well, as Lee Matthews said during the week on uh, on radio, he, he's irreplaceable in what yeah. he does. Irreplaceable. Yeah. So, Beyonce said, actually. Yeah, really? Yeah. Beyonce? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, Molly. Um, no, I, I, I just reckon... Molly Meldrum. Yeah. <laughs> just, Who are you, Dickie Nay? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, surely not Lavinia Nixon. Um, <laughs> I just think that Collingwood have had, had a couple of weeks flat, no question about that. I'm expecting a, a bounce back factor, even without some of those names out tomorrow night. I was right. just trying to bluff you into picking Geelong because there's no way Geelong beats Collingwood at the MCG. No, I'm, I, I'm, so I, think I was just trying. I love, to... I love this pressure being heaped on Collingwood. Yeah. I just think it's Mate, they're a dollar eighty. Taylor made for Collingwood to to make a statement, and I don't think, with all due respect to Geelong and how great they've been, I just haven't seen no. a, enough from them regularly. No, absolutely not. And Tom Hawkins won't be playing, and they don't have their best players in the park. So I'll be having a responsible lick at a dollar eighty at Collingwood. Tell Fair you enough. what, off the back of two losses, yeah, you no, think they're not going to respond. They're going to respond. They're a good team. Yeah, totally. I agree. I'm picking Collingwood. So am I. And it's I, I reckon it's one of the certainties of the weekend, Skater. Just put that in the bank. Uh, remember Port Adelaide, Richmond, you and I, Jaden, fell into that uh, many weeks ago. <laughs> North Melbourne v Essendon at 11.45am <laughs> oh, Saturday. <laughs> well, it's just anything Can we get involved. through these games pretty oh, quickly? Well, I will anyway. say, this is Ben Cunnington farewell game. Yes. Um, beautiful stat to come across the line here. Ben Cunnington calls time game. Uh, time. Games with 20 plus possessions for North Melbourne since 1999. So in the last 26 years, 24 years. Uh, there's about five blokes on one game with 20 plus contested. There's two guy. There's three guys on two of those games. Ben Cunnington has had over 20 plus possessions, 21 games. See, there is there is daylight between him and anyone else at that football club that have done what he's done from a contested ball point of view. And a career with setbacks, and we know his health issues, outstanding. And what I do love in, in modern footy is seeing. I didn't see it with. Um, with Bunger or, or Boots at the West Coast. I didn't see the the uh, announcement to the players. Maybe I missed it, but uh, no, I seen it with Ben Cunnington and others, I think you, you see it. Certainly North right. Melbourne are very proactive, and I love the, I love it when they... they it, as all clubs should be. Yeah. Why does West Coast not put that well, out? No, I, might not, I might be wrong. It might be there somewhere. Don't but roll I me up, Skate. Um, but uh, whatever you say, North Melbourne's lost each of its last nine matches against Essendon, conceding 100 points in, in three of the last four games. So wow. they are blah, just blah, going... Coming. Clarko's trying to get uh, you know back into the mix, but um, mind you, the bo- the bombers they, they've they've hit the their Skids. brick wall. Yeah, they've hit the brick wall. They'll still be winning, but um, yeah, I'm sure. I hope North give give Ben uh, a fitting farewell. Uh, Will Setterfield's back for Essendon. I don't know if that matters to anyone. I've got dream team. I'm into the second round of finals. Merritt and Darcy Parrish have been having really good years. How are you in the second round of finals when it's it's only round. Tr- does it all coincide? Because you can't play during finals because half the team would be out. Oh, so you don't put so re- finals start odds? before the season. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Look, I'm not going to break down fantasy footy to you, Skate. We need a much longer podcast. <laughs> You'd have to be able to log into the team first. Oh, <laughs> you, you, either you or Carl's playing Fortnite or something. Anyway. Is it? Does he do that? Yeah, nah. North know. Melbourne on an eighteen-game losing streak. So nineteen-game. Well, they're on an eighteen. Yeah, though. but we'll be nineteen. <laughs> okay, so we're big at Essendon. Good work. Okay, Essendon win that quite easily. I did a ladder predictor. I'm going to just pull this ladder predictor. You did a ladder predictor. Yeah, I did a ladder predictor. I'm going to tell you who's playing finals or not. I'm just wondering if I had Essendon playing finals. Well, how long did you do the ladder predictor? Um, last night in bed. Oh, they can't be playing finals, surely. Well, I don't know. They have to go to win every game, obviously. Well, I bet, I bet you haven't looked at the next two rounds of footy. Well, I know they're playing Collingwood final round right. on Friday night. Okay. So there's my ladder. Here it is. Anyway. No, that's not it. Anyway, uh, Sydney v Gold Coast, 11.45, same time. I think this one will be a decent game. Uh, must win for the Swans. They're making a late run for finals. Last year's grand finalist. Suns have won three of their last four at the SCG. So mm. the Suns can play at the SCG and they know how to beat Sydney, which some teams don't. West Coast being one of those. Uh, what do you think happens in this game? Yeah, I, again, this is the, the question mark with the Gold Coast. You're right, their form at the SCG has been pretty good. I recall last yes. couple of seasons they've been more than competitive. Um, by the way, Damien Harwick, just about locked and loaded. I think uh, Mark Evans and he have just uh, finished their, their little tour of Europe together to, to lock away the five-year the Melfi contract. Coast. Melfi Coast, got on your mark. Well done, just having a, a nice little uh, trip away. So that's happening, is it? Oh, well, put it this way. Eddie, even last night on Footy Classifieds, came out and said it's basically locked. He's not trying to... Trying to... I haven't heard too many people say what I've said. I, I reckon I'm absolutely on the money here with Damien Harmy. What People are blowing up, say, oh, he's not fatigued, clearly he's going to sign with another club. If he, in his mind, was like, I want to coach Gold Coast next year, you know how I said... You probably can't remember. No, no, I do. I, I haven't heard that rolled out much. No, but I think it's. I you know, think it makes sense credit? in hindsight. Hindsight, hindsight about what he's done. Um, that's a mindset I'm looking at because you always talk about mindset. Uh, no, I think you're right. I think he's he's thought oh, I'm not getting any more out of Richmond. 
Uh, Gold Coast are having a sniff around. That's what he's done. Um, and this game, I, I still think Sydney are playing the good, enough, footy. good enough footy to win. Um, interesting, Tom Papley, I noticed, has gotten a bit of trouble by starting up a podcast yes. with, a, with a betting uh, element to it. And should we course, acquire him here at Backstage Studios? Maybe I should reach out. Oh, mate, he, uh, you haven't, haven't you spoken to him yet? No. I reckon he'd be an absolute beauty. So uh, it's not a footy betting podcast, I'm assuming. No, I think it's, got, it's, it's horse it, racing. Well, whatever it is, it's well, it can't be footy. The New South Wales player, you can't do. Can't but do the New South bet. Wales uh, betting authorities, I think, are having a look into not not nothing illegal, but just I think given his AFL involvement. So it's well known that he's a massive punter. Is that right? Yeah, massive punter on horses. I didn't which, know that. Yeah, which you, that's just like, like yeah, but I didn't know he was a massive punter. No, but stop. you're allowed to. Yeah, of course you are. You're allowed to be, bet on NRL, it's not bet illegal, on is it? NBA. Right, exactly. So I think that's a bit. I think that's a bit of uh, wokeness or whatever you want to call it. Like. He's not doing anything on a footy. Well, he can't do, talk about betting. Yeah, can I don't know. Can he talk about alcohol? Can, I've, can I, he talk I, about... I, I'm not sure. Anyway. Political yeah. issues? You had a political podcast, are you scared? I have no idea. Anyway, I thought brought up the subject and you've run with it. That's good. Uh, Sydney for me. Bottom Mart Ruffy of the Week. Start your footy weekend at Bottom Mart. Oh. Grab your shelters where Bottom Mart has you covered. As I said, three of the last four. Gold Coast get it done at the SCG. Sydney got lots on the line. I know that. Buddy's retired. They get the up of him leaving. I, I think Sydney... I think I'm cool. I'm putting a line through them. Gold Coast, get it done. No, I'm sticking with Sydney. I they think. know. You're not getting two in a row. They know Damien Harwick's on the way. It's just like getting a new coach skate. You get the uptick. They've had their uptick. It's done. Uh, They're well, finished. Good luck picking a Ruffy for I've the rest of the round. Okay. Oh, it's not this one, is it? Brisbane v Adelaide, yeah. 235, Saturday at the Gabba. Yep. At the Gabatoire. Absolutely. They've lost uh, none, none in the past 10 matches, none. I think it is. No one can beat them there. No, no. But, and, they, and they can't beat anyone away from the Gabba, no, apart exa- from Fremantle. Exactly. Well, they looked pretty average last week, didn't they? Um, so <clears throat> with that in mind, and given Ad- Adelaide's tenuous position, sort of trying to find a place in the finals, this I give them a chance up at the Gabba. Um, you know, Oscar McAdurney back in. Oscar is big for them, mm-hmm. um, given the fact that he... he you know, they Darcy fought last week and wasn't yeah. overly, um, Good. you know, he was, he, was, he was okay, but, you know, certainly Jackson beat him. Um, inside inside the Gabba, they're, they're so hard to beat. But Adelaide... Why can Adelaide beat them at the Gabba? Well, I still think they've got enough... Mid- Roy Led's important. I still think with Tex, your Colin medalist, can cause them some issues. Harris Andrews, obviously, is going to be... You know, in big, the game. big game. It's a big game for, for, for Tex. I think... I just think Adelaide, even though their injuries are starting to mount up, that, that is my concern, that they, they've still got enough up at the Gabba to cause some issues for Brisbane and coming off a long trip. Texas on 599 degree goals. And, Maybe yeah, absolutely. And, and Brisbane, who played here on a Sunday, are playing on a Saturday. There's just a couple of elements there that I think aren't going to be as straightforward. So, hence, Adelaide, for me, you know, if you're putting your, your heart, your your life savings on it, Brisbane at home. Do you reckon anyone listens to us and goes, geez, I'm going to go get the life savings out of the bank account and put some money down? <laughs> Seriously. Do you, oh, reckon, do you reckon there'd be someone out there going, do you reckon anyone's going to put anything, <laughs> even $5 after listening to us, talk absolute <laughs> tripe, and given my record well, on the past... Well, surprising you put money on anything given the tripe that comes out of your mouth about these teams. Yeah, no, well, I've, I don't. I, well, if I was going to disagree with you, I'd be a bit more strident. But that's so not you're the picking case. Adelaide to I'm, beat. I'm Brisbane picking as my as a bottle mark ruffie of the week. Yes, I am bottle mark ruffie of the week. There you go. You've heard them both back to back. Get your shell. Uh, get your shelters down at bottle mart. Start your footy weekend. Grab your shelters where bottle mart has you covered. Skate. Well done. I like that. You're absolutely no chance. Brisbane absolutely smash Adelaide. Smash them. Yeah, smash them, mate. Smash them. It's a Gabba. Of course they do. They'll, they'll, they'll be back and firing. They'll be look, they'll be look like a premiership team it's at the Gabba. It's probably going to be 26 degrees. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be, be slippery. Anyway, Adelaide will show us something. You'll see all these blokes running through the middle of the ground that we didn't see a didn't see a wink of at Optus no, Stadium. You're right. They were right. missing, I, I, gone. Don't, dis- don't was... disagree. But Lockie Neal's, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlton, v, Carlton v Melbourne. Oh, <laughs> this is massive. Saturday. This is MCT. the match of the round, almost. Better than Geelong Collingwood? No, it's well, it's up there. Better with than it. West Coast for it? Carlton Melbourne has so many implications. Melbourne are top two. Carlton yeah. can't finish top four, I don't think. But th- this is this is the real test for for Carlton, a team they haven't been. I think Hang on. the real test. They just beat Collingwood. Well, that was two weeks ago. I'm saying this is their real test to see if they can uh, after after winning what Michael Voss said was his best victory as his coach life. against St Kilda. Given that the the circumstances and players missing, this though is is a, is a game that. He said being St Kilda was the best. Oh, I think because career. they came from behind and they've had injuries. I think St Kilda, the, the circumstances. Calm down. Yeah. Anyway, right, look, um, the big news, the huge news, is that uh, he's back. Who's back? Clary. Clary Oliver. Yeah, he's back. He's back. He, well, they're saying he's, he's 
he's ticked all the boxes. Imagine what will happen if Clayton Oliver is a late withdrawal with hamstring. Yeah, I know. But um, hence, Melbourne have shortened up considerably with him back in the side. That's a long time out of the game with the hamstring. But um, and, and there's a prospect given given that um, uh, Petty is out with that, that long-term, what's it called, Liz Frank? Yeah, you thinking Brodie Grundy? Brodie Grundy might get that call up again to, to come oh, and play be, as a forward. Well, well, if or you Ben Brown? In, if you have to, I'd be, oh, look, Ben Brown, we've had a, we've had a history, Ben and I. Uh, I'd be bringing in Brodie Grundy, but if you bring him in, he needs to play as a forward. And if Gorney needs a rest... That's that's yeah, I think that I yeah. think that's the plan. Not not okay. We have Brody Grundy, all Australian ruckman in the team. We need to get a 60-40 split. Gorney's a ruckman. Grundy's playing at full forward. He'll be able to test people out. Of course, and he doesn't have to kick five goals or bring the ball to ground. I will say a contest. Though, I will say that just because you're tall doesn't make you a good forward. Like if I was going into this game and, and I knew it was a Brody Grundy as a forward, I'd be licking my lips as a defender. To be honest, he doesn't have the forward craft, and you can't learn that in two weeks in the in the VFL. He, he won't turn himself from a Ruckman into a forward. When Ruckman come down to the forward line, yeah, they can clunk a big mark, but they don't have the mobility. Um, they don't have the forward craft. They don't know where to lead. They, they, you know, Unfortunately, Ruckman are, are Ruckman. So if I was um, Carlton here and I was weedering, I wouldn't be putting my best defender on Brody Grundy. No, that's that's a fair call. But I don't know who you would because Melbourne got some issues in front of the footy, even I'll though they're second on the ladder. I'll tell you, yeah, I'll tell you, who doesn't have any issues at the moment is Carlton. Since round fourteen, they're averaging one hundred and eight points per game, ranked number one, conceding only sixty one points per game. Also ranked first, and I've, I have been reading the Herald Sun the last couple of days, Sorry. and there's there's these analysis or analysts coming out from Champion Data, and yep. you know, there's always. Yep. That they've got the DNA given the footy they're playing at the moment to to be not just a, a smoky for for going deep in September, but to possibly with the DNA of what they're doing at the moment to to go and play in a GF. So and win it and win it. Well, possibly. Yeah, Why contested ball? Uh, well, all of the above. What, what the contested ball has been massive for transition, them. transition, what, scoring what, ability. They're doing forward line. They're doing so many elements right that they are. I think they're. I think they're. As advertised at the start of this year, this is what we thought Carlton mm. would be: yeah, strong true. midfield, big names who are missing, right? Who are missing? But but their but their DNA under Michael Voss from last year. This is the step up that we thought they'd take. So I know they had some trouble in the middle of the year, but this is the exact team that we expected at the start of the year, isn't it? Absolutely, There's no surprises. But they had, they've, obviously, you said the injuries. I mean, Nick Newman. Um, 35 touches last week. Paddy Cripps getting back to his best. Zach Chera, Fisher. Chera and Walsh are still out. Yeah, and Zach Fisher, the new role for him like uh, him. in defence, which is probably not a... And his name's been thrown up as a possible trade. So These these little fellas that play in the back line, they do a bloody good job because mm. imagine how frightening that would be if you're getting a handover and you're playing on Buddy, even though he's not... Done. That being right. said, you talk about uh, someone like Fisher Come going on. back. Um, Cosy Pickett just starting to look... Look as if he's through the guts. Yeah, he looks through the guts, but also kicked I think three last week against North, and he was looking back to something like his best. Who, so, pick, who play? Who, who, who pick? You know how I've given Carlton the greatest rap of all time. Yeah, you pick Melbourne. I'm picking Melbourne. Clayton Oliver back. I'm picking Melbourne too. Well done. We like it. Hawthorne v Western Bulldogs. Has he? Launceston. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. This is a big, a big, 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 big danger game for the Western Bulldogs who need to win to stay right up there in contention for what they're doing in finals. I reckon I said about five weeks ago, Western Bulldogs lay down Mazzetta to play finals because Hawthorne were in it. Well, Hawthorne are just beating Collingwood. Yeah, and I was going to look, I was going to think about this as my bottom up roughly of the week, but the numbers don't add up quite because the Bulldogs are $1.47, Hawthorne 270. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed so, to pick them. So I can't pick them. Yeah. Um, They've been too good for you. They've been too good. Who does Finn McGuinness go to? Because he absolutely destroyed Nick Dacos last week. Shock and awe, someone tags. Does it mean that Finn McGuinness can go to, uh, can he automatically go to a Bont or a Liber or someone someone of that ilk? Yes, absolutely. They're both contested ball players, whereas Nick Dacos isn't as much, although he has brought that into his game a bit. Tag it. You can tag one, you can tag them all, mate. It's a mindset thing. Yeah, it's not. Well, I'm it's not, not sure. It's not, it's not talent I don't or ability. Need to, need or to tag or... every every every. I agree with you. The day course thing is. Why is... not? Why not, Skeet? Why not? Why can't we have a tagger every week? Well, you you can, but uh, so many clubs uh, Why? are not following your lead. Why? 
because because they have other methods that they feel are, are beneficial for the team winning oh, as opposed to just tagging yeah, yeah. a bloke for the sake. And of there's it. about sixteen teams that can't win the flag at the moment, and Hawthorne's one of those. But I, <laughs> I will say, taggers, bring them back. I want taggers back. James Sicily needs to be handled by the Bulldogs. Oh, James Sicily, how big is he at the moment? His marks, his intercept marks. I would be completely shocked beyond belief if um, Luke Beveridge and the Western Bulldogs don't send someone to James Sisley. You have to. I'm sorry. You can't have him roaming around doing what he likes. No, I understand. Agree. Sets them up too much. Um, and then you've got Mitch Lewis, whose form uh, in long sessions very good. Last two matches, but at four and six goals. But your man Libba, I think he had 12 inside 50s oh, last week. Geez, uh, you talk about putting a tag on. But, oh, no, is you can't tag him. You can't tag him. Ta- is he taggable? No, it's too good. He, well, it, it's... So good. He just gets the yeah. He's not. I don't think he's one of those players that you can tag comfortably. So you're right. I think it's a real uh, banana peel game for for the Bulldogs. That banana mean, peel. Yeah, split. It's not banana split. It's not banana slip. peel. Oh, you fall you slip, often slip on a banana peel. Okay, thank you. Um, so I said had that one from you before. Yeah, no, just try and mix it up. A bit. Be picking. Um, <laughs> mix it pick, up. Pick, because of oh, Hawthorne yeah. and it's a young side having beaten Collingwood. Yeah. I just the dip's even, come. Tell you what, only a little dip because I think. You know, Launceston, they, they feel pretty comfortable there. Bulldogs, for me, again, just. their motivation is just so so high to, to keep winning. Bulldogs for mine too. I like your summary there, Skeeter. St Kilda v Richmond, Sunday Mole. I mean, there's some big games this week. There's a lot going on because there's so so little between these sides, between, you know, 5th and 13th spot, basically. This is St Kilda play Richmond at Marvel. Must win for both sides if any, either of them to have any chance of playing. Look, St Kilda, mind you, I've said any chance. St Kilda are 7th on the ladder and, and are equal with 6 spots. So they're not they're not... Missing finals by any means. No, and, that, look at and we've under, under they are in my predictor. They've just missed it, unfortunately. Oh, really? Ninth. Essendon missed it, by the way, as well. So GWS. So therefore, Sydney. you've got Richmond winning this one. Adelaide are playing finals as a Geelong. So Adelaide's got to beat Brisbane in your predictor. You'd I don't think. think so. No, I think they're winning the last two of the. And that gets them in. I think so. According yeah, to my like, predictor. How do you at your predictor? <laughs> the predictor. The predictor has four teams on forty-eight points, and Adelaide has the best percentage of the lot of them. They got one hundred fifteen percent. Yeah, but I'm fascinated by the the. the the measurements of your predictor. I just pick the wins and losses for the next three weeks and it gives you a spits out a ladder. It's on the AFL website. I've I'm, I'm d- developed code and software to do this. This is Oof. readily available to the, the public. sounds like AI. So St Kilda are missing um, and I think they're winning this game. Yeah. Uh, now, Trent Cotchin, he's retirement. He, oh, yeah. sorry. Hang on, hang but on. Hang on. Hang on. Well, this, this won't be his farewell game, I don't no, think. No, but nah. Richmond win. Richmond win. Richmond do this, mate. People retire, big milestone games. Richmond win. Sorry. But, but where's, who's the, the last game of the season might be his farewell game, I think, would have more relevance. But uh, I, I just throw it up there and you think automatically. Richmond win. <laughs> Jacob Hopper's out. You're He's got a concussion. Wrong. But Tim Mambry. What, what was, was that? that? Well, you're wrong. Oh. You'll be wrong. I didn't give you authorization to use my voice in that matter. <laughs> Imagine if you had to authorise your voice to be used anyway, seriously. Oh, Jason, take him off, concussion, he'll be out. Tim Membry is back for the Saints. Yeah. I'm picking I'm picking Richmond. Yeah, well, that just shows you. You don't actually take any thought in this tipping, do you? Because you, no. you've flip-flopped in about 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is Socrates, <laughs> the great thinker of our time. Fucking Socrates <laughs> ready. Seriously. But yeah, I don't want to say it was Trent Koch and you go, oh, no, Richmond winning. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, did you leave your, your encyclopedia of research at the at the door before, did you? Like, what what sort of thought do you put into this? Like, oh, we, about as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, but I do keep it a track. On, I'm doing brekkie radio, I'm across, looking at stats and numbers and trends. Yeah, I, I do hear those <laughs> words coming out of your mouth. Yeah, looking at the Herald Sun. Yeah, I hear it all, mate. Well, I have my own opinion as well. That's why St Kilda will be winning this game. Oh, congratulations on another poor pick. It's Mark Reddings. Tell you what, people listening here, I mean, seriously. Why if is you're such tuning a poor in pick? for analysis, you know you're not. You're in the wrong spot. Port Adelaide v GWS, Adelaide Oval. Tell us who's going to win, Skeeter, and why? Well, Richmond, by the way, have, no. have, have one of the, they've struggled. Have, have not win. won any of their last seven matches at Marvel. So <laughs> that's why I've tipped and killed here, Buffhead. Uh, what's the next game? Port Adelaide GWS, the last round of the of the week. Have the wheels fallen off Port in terms of their injuries? Lost four Charlie in a row, Dixon. Mate. Lost four uh, in a row. Charlie Dixon's got a little uh, stress fracture, I think. Ruled out until finals with a broken foot. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a. It's a break, yeah. Stress fracture, wow. yeah. So that's that's huge for them. Um, I don't know. It's wow. It all Ali is back, but yes, Trent McKenzie's uh, out. Yes, well, the concussion protocols obviously done and dusted, and the, uh, they've got the Giants, haven't they? Who have been just extraordinary, given what they've they've done this year. They had a little hiccup against the Swans, but you're, you're going to like this. 
so when I was doing my ladder predictor last night, I couldn't yeah. sleep, right? So I'm, really? I was doing some research for the show, right? You know what? I, you know where I found myself? This is genuine. I promise not making this up. What? I was on the GWS website on my phone in Western Australian, the West Australian members section, and yep. I was trying to buy my, a membership, I was trying to buy a GWS membership. I love them. Do you pass? Did do you give that to Alex just to clear that you? Oh, you, it's not. Ex- I mean, it's not, 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 not overly it, expensive. What, an interstate membership. What's, a, what's an interstate membership? Cost? Oh, yeah, it's one hundred eighty bucks or something. One hundred eighty bucks. It doesn't get you much. I think you get a couple of stickers. And you don't think that's expensive? I think one hundred eighty bucks. For, they come here what, Mate, what, how much once do you a spend year on the punt, per week. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> probably double that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Mate, I, I I just want to show some support. I, they're my they're my they're my new favorite team, I, and I want to I want to get behind them. So you you've bought a membership. Well, I didn't. I didn't buy one. <laughs> I didn't have my credit card. <laughs> I would have bought one. You ask Alex or not? Yeah, no. oh, you have to ask Alex for that. No, I'll, no, no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Alex or your wife? My wife. Yeah, okay. So look, GWS, my new favourite team, yep. playing in Adelaide Oval. I think that's that's a bit of a stick in the mud. A porter on the slide, big time. Yeah, big you say time. that, but Giants have won three of the last four games at the Adelaide Oval, including that win over the, the Crows. Since round nine. seventeen points down, as you know, at three quarters. I'm look, I'm looking in the eyes and telling you this. I'm this is my Sorry. history. I, I know like, that. Oh, do you? So they've you just read, it, you just read it off your phone. No, no, I know the three of the last four did, but I know they beat Adelaide coming from behind at three quarter time. So the ground doesn't hold any fears. Since round eighteen, Port have conceded more points than any other team, one hundred and four per game. What was it? Oh, yeah, a little. That's a that's a interesting stat, isn't it? And almost a bottle mark ruffy, but I'm picking my team. I'm picking GWS. Just Giants. straight out to win. Picking them. Yeah. No, well, it's not a, not a bad shout, but I surely Ken Hinkley is about to resign with the power. There's got there has to be a response at some stage. Yes. Because they're top two to top four to I mean, could they miss the top four? You can tell me with your ladder predictor. Does Ken Hinkley keep his job if they slide out of the top four? No, they can't slide out of the top four. No. Well it, Koshy said well, I, well, that's Koshy a, just said he's going to be re signed before the final. So I I'd suggest that's that's I think on my ladder predictor, I actually picked Port Adelaide to win this game because I've got Giants missing finals. But if I change that on my ladder predictor... We're just doing this on the run, are we? Yeah, I think so. People okay. are still here. If they're still here, they're, they're having a good time. Um, let's change that right now. Giants win. Wow, we. There's a lot on the line here. So on my ladder predictor, GWS are 10th. They win this game. They finish 7th. Port Adelaide slide to fourth. They were finishing second with this game. Yeah, well, uh, look, the, and look, those brave as they were against Geelong, and, and we had no guys like Finlayson, and they had some illness, some injuries. Yeah, it's there's a bit of a bit of a panic. I would have thought at Port at the moment, just given all those, you know, the losses and the injuries. So this is a massive game. I, I'm going to stay true to could, the fact could, that they can could, win at home. Couldn't sell you into it. No, you can't sell me into everything, Scoey, but uh, you've done that before, but not this time. I, I, Port, it's just too much at stake for them. I, I, well, I keep saying it, but hopefully with some players coming back and they get a couple more in that category in the next couple of weeks. But, yeah, they're a bit shaky. Will Scofield, Mark Redding, Shuttle Footy Cast. Got some listener feedback here, Skeeter, to get through. Yeah, good. I could see your name in a couple of the comments. Not sure. Uh, we, we might start with this one, given any defamation we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, given what we're just talking about, with do people listen and actually do things with what we talk about? Chris uh, 0508 says, "I put a multi on Bont and Tex last week for the Brownlow and the Coleman after your chat, Scoey." Chris 0508, you're an absolute. Last week, yeah, that's before Nick Dacos got injured, mate. How do you reckon that Bont's favourite for the Brownlow? Hey, you just mentioned it, uh, there's a Quinella involved here. You need Tex Walker. To win the Coleman. Mate, that's a great bet, Chris. Couldn't love it anymore. May or may not have one that looks exactly the same. Jason D, 3918. <laughs> what, what, is that like their postcard or something, is it? What, I don't, does, <laughs> what does 3918 mean? Is it like Beverly Hills 90210? There was, there was a lot of Jason Ds and he's put some numbers in behind it. Is it like just code? Okay. It just sounds fancy. 90210. <laughs> You'll like his comment. <laughs> so I think last, I think on Monday you're wearing a jacket. Are you wearing a jacket? Probably, yeah. Skeet, skeet, skeet looks like skeet, skeet looks Be like kind. Skeet looks like he should be on Hogan's Heroes with that jacket. <laughs> That's who's that? Who's that? <laughs> it's Jason D. Jason D. Fuck off. Seriously, <laughs> Hogan's Heroes. That's a good. He, he must be old enough to know Hogan's Heroes because you probably. Wouldn't I don't have, even know. No, you wouldn't heard of it. it. It's a show from the seventies. <laughs> no, good shout, Jason. The old try not to wear. It's actually a. It's actually a really good fashionable jacket that I wore to Manchester. And it's you know design and anyway. 
got it from Channel Seven. I love it. So if you don't like it, then um, I know nothing. Which is which is about <laughs> Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> Give me some buttons, please. Give me some buttons out there. Give me George. <laughs> Hit me. A little respect, for I am Costanza, <laughs> Lord of the Idiots. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you to my wife, Victoria, for, for providing the audio. B, B, B Wood says, and it's B Wood 2462. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does Brody offer the Eagles a mature midfielder? Are there sufficient backup ruckman at Freo? If there's none behind Jackson and Darcy, then surely Darcy stays. So, two questions. Does Darcy stay? Are they seeing enough of Jackson to want to flick him to Geelong? And will Brody, would he be an option for West Coast? Brody Grundy? You're saying or Will Brody? Does Brody, Brody offer the Eagles a mature midfield? Oh, midfield. So, oh, Will Brody, you're saying? We were talking about Will Brody last week on Monday. Yeah, I think he's, he gets some numbers. It's been a, a reminder. I, I don't think he'd be a player that West Coast would No, I agree. I don't think he's the, the top they want. Actually, you know what? Why not? He's young. Yeah. Why I, not? Yeah. I, could he not play a role in West Coast midfield? He could. Put it this way. He, he's a player that I wouldn't be... I mean, their full, full focus, the Eagles, is about going to the draft. And I know that's, that's, that'll come later in the in the. What if they the can get piece. him for not much? Well, why, why would the Dockers give him up for not much? I don't I don't see West Coast trading a lot this offset. No, not, no. It's draft-related, isn't There's nothing, it? Nothing to trade. No, you're right. I said the only... Well, we've talked about it, Tom Barris, yeah. Oscar Allen, yeah. Liam Duggan. Perhaps. There's not not really, with all due respects, enough tradable value. So that's where the draft becomes just critical to them. So, and I don't th- I don't see a Will Brody in their line of sight, to be honest. But I might be wrong. And what was the other one about uh, Brody Darcy? Grun- oh, Darcy Jackson. and Jackson. Like I asked this question. Before. Yeah, yes. I said, look, my point is Darcy, you don't get a very good, good player. Players. Why do you give away a good player? <clears throat> Unless he wants to go, and if, if that's the case, you do the best you can in a deal. But if he wants to stay, I don't see why you would leave yourself vulnerable in the rucking department with just having Luke Jackson, who who is not a, you know, let's be honest, he's not not a, a bona fide ruckman per se. He's got some other skills to his to his craft. But Maybe I, he wants to go. Well, if he does, then then facilitate that if you've got to. Yeah. Stay tuned for more West Coast news this week, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as well. Socials at Shelter Footy Cast. You can follow us over there, footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Email Skeeter. Have a great weekend. Yes, you too. Matildas go well. We'll, we'll see be, you at the Derby. Yeah, we'll be at the Derby together. You can have a couple of sausage rolls. Okay, can't wait. <laughs>